All right, so our world, beautiful world, is changing. And when it comes to social media and this notion of how do we address some of these big questions Unitarian Universalists are wrestling with, how do we keep our young people? Why is it that so many Unitarian Universalists are raised and leave? There are twice as many people who self-identify as Unitarian Universalists as we have in our congregations. That alone should be an alert, canary in the coal mine. And there's increasing talk of spiritual, not religious people, the nuns, all these who we think they really knew what we were about, should be with us. All these things, like why, 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 why? Why are we not doing what we think we should, accomplishing, getting the people, the young people, growing, growing, all these things? Like, and people ask me, Peter, why? Grab me, why, why? We've been through a number of revolutions that have, in short time, changed the world as we know it. I'll touch on those briefly. All right, you remember, it's like 1985, America Online. You know, raise your hand if you ever, you ever used America Online. or call. I mean, I was so excited. We got it around Christmas, and like, my dad's around. I was like, let's do this thing. It's like... <laughs> comes on. And we have access to this new thing, websites, and there's text, and a picture loading. <laughs> Fortunately, 1989, Tim Berners-Lee, Unitarian Universalist, went to CERN to work on what became the World Wide Web. And can you believe this? They, soon thereafter, 1993, gifted it to the people of Earth. We're not going to keep this technology. We are going to promote it in a free and open way. 98, I'm at the UUA, and I see in the fifth floor, Tom Stites, then the editor, I mean, the head of the UU World, was looking at this thing, like, what's that, Tom? He's like, it's a search engine. Google, cool name, a search engine for scouring websites for information? That could be handy. 93, a world pre-Google. Then we start getting into a, a new kind of technology where we're not just looking at websites and having access to information and being able to publish information. We're able to interact. Human beings came together to create an encyclopedia, the sum of all human knowledge in all languages. Not all yet, but we're moving there. We don't have to buy from somewhere the big, fat, you know, did anyone ever have that, this encyclopedia? Man, I, I remember helping to throw out old, dusty ones. <laughs> Collaborative. Free. We started getting blogging. MySpace, remember MySpace? They're relaunching, they'll be okay, don't worry. Justin Timberlake's helping them. Uh, <laughs> Facebook! Facebook came out connecting us even deeper. And, I mean, the majority of the world is with internet access is on Facebook, connecting, doing amazing things. Then I said 2005, YouTube. And we all gained the ability, the ability that previously only television networks had to broadcast our message via video. Now, HD video to the world. Time Magazine made us, you, the person of the year. Why? Because you have unimaginable power, which we do not use much. Stephen mentioned a website, um, UnitarianUniversalism.tv. I've been collecting Unitarian Universalist videos. There's over 2,000 of them on the site, and mostly they suck. <laughs> They're not designed for the internet. They're designed for the people who are already connected to you and maybe want to catch up what they missed, not for newcomers. Twitter, 140 characters. What can you do with that? And then uh, the biggest thing for me, 2007, who remembers what happened that started changing the world, the next big revolution, 2007? Anyone? Anyone? Oh, my mother! That's my mother, all right, she's rocking it. The iPhone, we start the mobile revolution. All the technology that we have here online that's been starting to revolutionize our world, bringing us together, connecting us, allowing us to collaborate, 
suddenly shrinks to a form that we can carry around with us everywhere. And we do. And wouldn't Captain Kirk be envious? Because <laughs> ours are so much cooler than his. So our world's changed radically. And so when people ask me, because I do work, consulting work with congregations to grow, do outreach, why, why? All those questions I touched on earlier. Why aren't these things happening? Why aren't we accomplishing what we want? Why are they leaving? Why aren't they joining us? My friends, the answer is so, so simple. And we're going to get into it in detail today. But it comes down to our work in ministry, the way we're going about it, we're doing it the same way as before all that happened. Anyone like Starbucks? Yeah, I love, I love going there, big comfy drink. You go there now, computer lab. And at first I was poo-pooing it. I sat in one of the last comfy chairs in my local Starbucks. Computer, 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 computer. And don't they, what, why are they here? They, this used to be a third place to connect. And then I looked closer and all those people were both doing work, but they were chatting, connecting. They're hyper-connected to each other, people they care about. So the world's different. And I just believe, and I hope you leave here today believing, our ministry has to change if we're to thrive in this world. I mean that world, that world.